Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Sorry for the lack of videos in the past. Um, I haven't been here for nine months. Not, nine months have passed and I haven't uploaded a video. I'm really sorry for that. I had some problems and issues that were taken care of, mostly. Um, I might explain that in a different video, might not. It doesn't matter because today's video is, as you can say, I think you can say a continuation of the previous video that I made nine months ago. Uh, which is the waypoint uh, video, but basically this time we've made it so we have a platform that moves from a couple of waypoints that are defined and that can be changed any minute and now we've added the option that you can actually stand on the platform and it will um, move you with it. So um, it requires a small change in script, but it's pretty easy to do, not really difficult and we're just going to go ahead and show you how you can do that. But first we're going to delete these things because we're going to start from scratch and I'm going to start explaining these scripts. So yeah, it's pretty simple, um, easy script. Um, you have a more detailed, um, a, a more detailed explanation of the waypoint functionality that I've added here in the previous video. The link will be in the description for that, but I'm just going to go over it again briefly so you guys understand. So basically we have a um, array of game objects which are called waypoints which are going to determine um, the uh, the positions of the waypoints so the positions where I want my moving platform to go. We have a game object which is player so we can reference it later. We have an integer which is called current which determines which is the current waypoint. Uh, we have a float rotation speed which is the speed I guess of the rotation and we have a public float which is called speed and uh, that's called uh, that's we call that we made it public so we can change it in the inspector and it determines the speed of the moving platform then we have a float uh, waypoint radius which is the rape uh, which is the which is a radius that's um, around the uh, waypoints because the waypoints are actually empty game objects and if we do not have this at all the um, the waypoint, the moving platform is going to go to the um, empty game object and uh, it's going to start glitching around it and just moving around it and it's basically going to bypass the point at which we wanted to say that okay the waypoint has been reached we can now go to the next waypoint so we have to make a small little radius so when it's near the center of that empty game object it's going to count as if it passed that game object and we can go to the next waypoint so in the void update, we have a if statement which says if vector three distance waypoints current transform position. So if the current uh, it returns the distance between uh, vector A and vector B, it returns the distance of the current waypoint if it, if it's current transform dot position and of the transform dot position of the moving platform. And if that distance between the waypoint and uh, our uh, moving platform is less than waypoint radius then we're going to say current is random.range zero waypoints length. Now um, this works as uh, when we reach a waypoint, um, the next uh, waypoint is random. So you can change this uh, by just adding a number one to the current. Um, I've, I think I've talked about this in the previous video. Um, so you can check that out if you want to like that. I think the first part of the video is I explained it where the waypoints are not uh, selected randomly, but uh, you but they're selected in a particular order, and then I uh, changed it to this. So you can change it back if you want it to be if you want your waypoint system to be in a determined order. So next we have if current is um, more than equal to the waypoint length. So basically, if the current um, integer is more than the maximum. Um, the maximum value of the waypoint array then we set it back to zero because that means uh, for example if the uh, current is number three and we have three waypoints uh, if it's three so three is the maximum value of the waypoint array over here we want it to set back to zero so the next um, so the next waypoint it's gonna it's gonna go back to the beginning and then this goes up again and it checks it makes new random waypoint etc uh, again, I say you can uh, you can change this to be in a specific uh, order. Just watch the last video. Uh, so here we say this is the part where we actually move the moving platform. 
transform dot position is vector three move towards transform position waypoints current dot transform position so it moves the transform position so the moving platform to the current waypoints transform position um by time dot delta time time speed so it actually um does the time speed part because um this determines the speed we have to multiply it with the time dot delta time which is the time in the game next we have void on trigger enter collider n so if n dot game object is equal to player player dot transform dot parent um just figured out something sorry for the change we can delete this because it's not used anywhere in the project this was used in the last video uh, i thought it was used somewhere over here but nope so never mind you can delete that or the script will be on github you can download it pretty simple so uh, we, this is the part that checks if the player is on the moving platform so if your player is on the moving platform if it enters its trigger we uh, check it so if the end game object is equal to player so if it's the player collider that uh, enters the transforms uh, the transforms collider we say player .transform parent is equal to the transform so uh, the parent of the player is the moving um moving platform the, the parent of the player is the moving platform because once the player is child object of the moving platform it's going to start following it if it's um in its uh, collider you'll see how that works later so and this is just a part if we exit the trigger same thing as the same thing over here we just say parent parent uh, player dot transform dot parent is equal to null because we wanted to set back the um we basically wanted to do undo this part and state that the player does not have a parent anymore so how this works pretty simple let me just say so pretty simple you go over here let's create our moving platform a little cube let's make it smaller and a bit bigger i guess uh let's just add a little texture to it um whatever random texture we're gonna add all right let's let's and add this orange pattern to it now we're going to move it a bit and uh, so this is going to be our moving platform and now we're going to want to create its waypoints which uh, for example the first waypoint is going to be I don't know it's going to be over here we're going to make it a bit yeah down to the ground okay so that's going to be let's call waypoint one and we're going to duplicate it three times the second waypoint can be over here and the third waypoint can be i don't know it can be it can be over here yeah that's good so i'll just oops i'll just rename these to two and this one two three so we have the waypoints we have the moving platform now um we can add the script so um let's add the moving so let's add the waypoint script it's called like that so waypoints so as you can see we have a size over here which is the amount of waypoints that we have because we have three of them i'll just put the number three add waypoint one as the element zero two as element one and three as element two now we have to add the player to the um player game object over here we can set the speed for example to 2.5 i guess not much not little and uh, now because we um in the script we ask for a um we check if the player is on the moving platform by entering a trigger and uh, because as you can see it's box collider has is trigger over here but if we check this the player is just going to fall through uh, the bo uh, the moving platform because when a platform when a collider is a trigger it acts as a trigger and not a collider so when you walk through it so a function on trigger enter or whatever function related to triggers gets called and if there's a script on the object and it acts as a trigger and not a collider so we have to we're going to uncheck this and we're going to add a new box collider and this one is going to act as a trigger so we have one box collider which is a collider and another one which acts like a trigger and in this one which acts like a trigger we're just going to uh, click on the edit collider and the top part uh, the top um uh the, the top collider the top part of a collider we're gonna raise it a bit so it's gonna it's gonna have no trouble detecting if the player is on the moving platform or not 
so that's pretty much it let's go let's see if it works so yeah the platform moves it's kind of fast so i do not know if i'm going to be able to jump on it oh right now it's hopefully it's going to come back so see this is the problem when the uh when the waypoints are random and you're probably going to want to use um a set uh, uh, the waypoints in a set order so i really recommend watching the last video but basically this is how it works you can have any number of moving platforms you want uh, you can make new waypoints you can do whatever you want and uh, yeah it's pretty simple pretty useful and yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, comment on any ideas or any needs you have i'll try to fill all of them uh, also comment if you have any questions about this any problems i'll be glad to reply uh, sorry for not replying to all the comments because there have been a lot of comments um in the period while while i was gone so i can't really reply to all of them but if you're still watching the channel uh, watching the videos you can ask me any question in this um in this video and i'll try to get back to it as soon as possible so thank you for watching um have fun